Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends, and welcome on the happy hour of JCB Live. Tonight, another passionate, fabulous, incredible guest. One of the most recognized wine men in the Guild of the Sommelier, one of the most accoladed, one of the most acclaimed, one of the most charismatic in the world of food and wine. We've been fortunate to be friends for many years, and he's been one of the men who really helped food evolve in America and wine to go with it. We owe him a tremendous amount of what we call the premiumization of wine in fine dining. His name is Tyler Field. Ladies and gentlemen, he's very charming, very sexy. Just to let you know, he has a beautiful wife, so he's taken, but he's known as one of the most charming, charismatic, passionate man in the wine world, generous, fabulous, and an amazing trendsetter. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the famous Tyler Fields, who runs the operation of Morton's, and of course, is part of the Landry's group, one of the most powerful group of food and wine in the history of the United States. Here he is! Hey! <laughs> Bonjour, mon ami! Bonjour, mon ami! Hey, I gotta tell you, you look even better than pre-COVID. <laughs> no, my- What have my, you done? <laughs> my, my haircut sucks. <laughs> I think your hair looks amazing. And I love the style. Yeah. What's that beautiful jacket? I well, I, I, I put on the chef coat for you today because uh, out of honor, because um, I believe you also are celebrating a birthday. So uh, I wanted to make sure I was honorable and wore a bright color um, to celebrate you as well. Well, you're very kind. And I know, you know, I call you the king. So do you want to show us what that really means to be called well, king? I, yes. Well, I, I know this is the... Uh, um, JCB happy hour. So I've already opened up my uh, bottle of uh, Cremant de Bourgogne, the uh, JCB 21 here. And of course, champagne is the drink of kings. And so also when I visit your home or your wineries, there's always a costume element. So I brought my king's hat to enjoy my beautiful, beautiful sparkling wine. You're looking so good, your highness. My lord, my your highness, my king. <laughs> well, a toast to you. If you would have been a king, which right. country would you choose and what king would you want to be? Oh, gosh. Tough question, but I, I definitely, because my passion for wine, it would definitely have to be France. Um, and uh, as far as all the kings in France, um, I'm trying to think about the one that had the most fun. I'm not sure who that is. But if I could be like the king and then John F. Kennedy, I think that would be my uh, uh, <laughs> kind of bent. Well, maybe I would, I would suggest there's one man who really triggered great food in France. It's Louis XIV. Great style, great art, and really promoted great chefs. So you would have to be Louis XIV, the most powerful king of all time. So well, that sounds those to you, Louis, I'm going to call Louis, <laughs> and interestingly enough, here it is. So if we zoom here, look at that. This is actually a very unique, phenomenal sculpture. You're talking about King of Louis XIV, portrait on his horse, winning over territories of France. You can see how fabulous he looks. He's not as good looking as you are, but Oh, That's no. the closest you are. <laughs> That's so great. So how does it feel to be Tyler Field? I've well, always yeah. wanted to be you. So can you explain the world? What is it to be you? Well, what it, there's, well there's, a, there's a couple of sides of me, but as I get older, it kind of morphs into one. So um, well, how we know each other is for my work in the wine business, and which started at a very early age. Um, I'm a Navy brat, grew up in... Uh, uh, I, for chance for my young childhood, I grew up in Italy next to a vineyard, uh, was friends with the family, uh, had summer jobs working in wineries and uh, going through college, uh, worked in restaurants and all of this. Of course, I had much different plans for myself, but um, I was lucky enough 30, 30 years ago, 
um, last month to uh, walk into a place called Morton Steakhouse and they were looking for a wine manager in Boston, Massachusetts. And um, uh, they asked me if I knew anything about wine. And I said, yeah, you know, I have, I have some experience. And they said, you got the job. And I'm like, oh no, well, now I really have to know about wine. And uh, so I was very, uh, that was right when the Guild of Sommeliers and the Master Sommelier programs were starting. And a gentleman named Fred Dame took me under his wing about and a guy named Brian Julian, uh, for those that have uh, been doing this for a long time. Um, and it's been a ride with them for education. And then Morton's is growing and growing and growing. Um, and then 10 years ago, I was purchased by uh, uh, Landry's. So I not only oversee the Morton's uh, wine and spirits programs, but now also Del Frisco Double Eagle, um, Mastro's, um, Ocean Air Seafood Room, Strip House, and a variety of other um, mostly steakhouse high-end um, concepts um, that are very wine driven in their uh, passion. So I, I get to be submerged in this beautiful world of wine. Um, continue, it, it continues and I hope, I hope it never ends. And uh, I'm very, very blessed and uh, very, very humbled uh, by all the great people that I, I work with and for. And uh, here I am 30 years later, sitting in my uh, quarantine um, dining room in Cashier, North Carolina, which is in the Western mountains of North Carolina. We're at about 4,000 feet and uh, it's absolutely beautiful here. And it's been, since we all had the quarantine, this is a, a pretty nice place to do it. Maybe not quite as nice as Napa Valley, but it's, uh, it's pretty sweet. Well, what an amazing journey, Tyler. What an example, three decades with Morton's yeah. and now you are really running some of the most exciting restaurants in the United States and worldwide. Tell me, what made Tyler who he is today? I want to go right into your heart and understand right this oh, for someone else. What, 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 I, I, the, the gut answer is fear. I fear every day when I wake up that I'm going to fail. So I have to figure out what I'm going to do every single day to make myself better. So that kind of gets gets me out of bed. Um, and then I think it's, um, it's, it's determination and, and, and never getting, giving up on anything. And then I think what qualifies me for the hospitality business is that I'm very, um, I think the most honorable thing in the world is to serve others. Yeah. And so even though I'm buying things um, in, in the back of my mind, it's about how, how is that going to engage the person spiritually or how is it going to make somebody happy? And then when they're, you know, if you're managing large groups of employees, you know, you can treat them like soldiers and they'll do a good job. But if, if you take it to a different level, you can create warriors around you. And it's, it's, it's a higher level. And I, and I, I always look at the, there's that biblical story in the Bible where Jesus turns water into wine. And I, I really believe it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't to really get the crowd, you, you know, drunk for his sermon. It was, to give the thing a state of grace, to give the sermon just something that lifts it so it becomes, you know, this, this, it just rises, your, it raises your life. And um, that's what I think this business can do if it's done properly and if it's done with care. And that's what I try to do every day. And I'm really afraid of failure. And so I, I work harder than anybody else, I hope, or I keep trying to. Well, and you're an incredible inspiration for so many. So. I'd like to know what inspires the charming Tyler Field. I think, I think the inspiration comes from, I can't accept, and this is as a husband or as a father or as uh, working in a restaurant, uh, if I can't accept uh, someone being unhappy with something. And yeah. so my, dr my drive is, is, is always, okay, how can I fix this? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fixer of emotions. I'm a fixer of, of, of problems because we all have a very brief time here um, and we, we need to take care of each other's souls. And so my, my mission every day is how can I affect the most number of people in a powerful way that is possible for a simple human being that lives in the mountains in North Carolina? Oh, I love it. So what has been your most impactful influence into a group or a person? Would you want to share that to us? One of, one of the transformation you've done that has been the most inspirational for you and that you're willing to share. Because I know many 
the first time I met you, I was obviously taken, besides your charm, by your knowledge. Yeah. And what really, really struck me, Tyler, I need to tell you, is your unbelievable intimate understanding of food, service, and wine. And yeah. that tri-angular uh, relationship was so clear in your mind as we discussed wine that you already knew what you wanted to do, what you wanted to serve, how it should taste, and how it should pair. And I was amazed by your clarity. So share with us your perspective of it. Okay, well, I, I, I can share food. I, I can share. Let's talk about wine first. Um, we all, yourself included, John Charles, taste, taste thousands of wines a year and um, finding out how people do it different ways and things like that. But there, there's certain wines that, you ju that, that just stop you. Yeah. And so you were talking, um, there was a, a Burgundy wine about 20 years. It was a Latosh um, DRC that I put in my mouth and tears just started um, coming down my face because we're, we're in this business to create beauty and so many people um, make okay stuff, but, but that, that wine, you can tell in it, I, I could tell immediately, even though it was 20 years ago, that, that somebody had such passion um, in growing the vineyards, in the dirt, in the um, vinification, in uh, the way it was handled from getting to where it was to wherever I was, being able to enjoy it. And um, I feel actually, and this isn't because I'm, I'm on with you, that um, you have vineyard holdings all over the world, but that same type of inspiration is what I love to find in um, glasses of wine. And uh, it's, you can tell the ones that are spectacular, which also include uh, many, most of all the wines you're making right now, because you're constantly evolving. And I think you come at it from a very emotional level. I come from just things at an emotional level. I wish I wasn't like that, but like you are, um, I'm very, very passionate. And the same thing goes with, with food pairing. When I came in 30 years ago at Morton's, we had two wines by the glass. One was a, a, a Gallo Chablis and uh, one was something else. It didn't exist. It was, it was all bottles, but it was usually bottles from the old world. There was uh, Italian wines, French wines and things like that. But when I started out in the, in the uh, uh, late eighties, getting serious in the wine business, that's when the whole wine world in uh, uh, California started to evolve into a world-class kind of um, uh, idea of wine and yeah. then of course the judgment of paris drove it and things like that so i was i was very lucky to be part of this just amazing growth in um the american wine world which of course is perfect for um the steaks i was serving um obviously uh in in the red wine categories in america um you're incredible at cabernet uh which is the perfect pairing and um I'm sure we'll talk about our relationship and the number one selling wine at Morton's uh, that we created together more years ago than I want to remember, but- uh, I know, <laughs> let's not be reminded of the years. <laughs> but um, with, with, within that, um, uh, the, the ability to pair these, these great um, dishes of beef and fresh seafood and with, America kind of became local, kind of like it is in Europe, where, yeah. you know, the wine was from the same place that the cat cattle was from. And uh, we could start doing a lot more pairing, a lot more engineering of, of different ways to explore typical American food, which is the steakhouse type of concept. Of course, that's morphed into bigger fine dining and there's service involved and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, the wines from California um, in the late 80s, early 90s, and they continue to be um, very, very powerful wines um, that pair very well with the cuisine that I've been living in. So um, I've been very lucky that way. Well, this is quite amazing. So you were talking about Burgundy. As we continue our discussion, I suggest we try. Oh, the Burgundy. So we're not going to bring the wine that brought tears to your eyes 20 years ago. We purposely selected a wine for you. You're a trendsetter. You're one of those people who are really building new visions to the wine world. We purposely 
selected a Bourgogne Pinot Noir, Ursuline, so in an old convent from the 17th century, screw cap. So I'd love for you to tell me what you think of this entry-level wine, in fact, of Burgundy. So we're going purposely the opposite direction of where you were with the Grand Cru 20 years ago. It's absolutely stunning. It's definitely old world right, uh, right away. Bright fruit, raspberries, cherries. Not too high in alcohol, thank you. <laughs> thank you. God bless. It's delicious. Hold on, the color's beautiful too. Oh, John Charles, since, since we're out of the um, champagne of kings, I love Pinot Noir on the porch, so I'm gonna put my boater <laughs> hat on. A canotier, I love this hat. Yeah, so like I'm in a gondola with my, with my Pinot Noir. We're between Venice and the Rhone Valley going to Burgundy, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> You're looking good. Always a fashion statement. Yeah. Oh, John, John Charles, and I know how much this costs because I carry it because it's so delicious in, in my restaurants. But if I didn't, um, it's, you, you know, it's from your crew. I mean, it's, 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 it delivers about six price points above uh, oh, thank you. from a quality standpoint. It's absolutely delicious. And, you know, um, this was some beautiful bread and cheese and um, fresh fruit and picnic. It's, it's, it's awesome. And I, I chilled it up too. And I also, and I know you're a big believer in this too. I made sure I had the right stem. Uh, I love your stem. You know, for it and uh, made sure it was at the right temperature. I think um, a lot of people, and I know the ones tuning in are very, very wine savvy, but uh, try, tr when you're drinking red wines, try to make sure they're cellar temperature and put it in a beautiful glass. And then you just get the whole punch in the face of how beautiful and mesmerizing these, uh, little girls and boys are that are in these bottles. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, Tyler, thank you. So explain to all of us the magnificent process of food and wine pairing, not only for Morton's, but today you represent so many phenomenal, extraordinary restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know, you said it, Del Frisco's, Mastro, right. and the list goes on. The right. Palm you just recently bought a few months yeah. ago. Yeah. So tell us how you do this on a professional basis sure. and, 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 and how it works. Okay. So um, what I try to do is, is, first of all, I think where a lot of people get stuck is you have a, um, when you go out for dinner, um, you're thinking about center of the plate. And yeah. so if you're, going to, if you're going to a steakhouse, um, you're thinking about steak. However, when, when you're actually dining there, you're having a beautiful uh, seafood tower, and then you're having a beautiful salad uh, or um, some other type of uh, uh, vegetable, and then you're going into your steak, and yeah. then you're going into a beautiful dessert. And what I try to enliven, Corvin helps me with this, and also bigger programs is, is that's, that's four different opportunities to pair beautiful wines with something versus going in and ordering a bottle just for the steak. And so, That's right. so one, of the, one of the things I look at is how can we offer the guests four or five different wine experiences within one sitting? Uh, I think we get lost sometimes that we buy the bottle of, you know, that's gonna go with the steak and then that's kind of it, or, uh, you know, um, have a big martini and then get to the table. It's just, I, I, I think wine needs to go all, all the way through a meal versus just with the entree. And I think that's a very, uh, that's certainly how it works in Europe. Um, and sure. I think in America- You're speaking my language here. <laughs> right, and I, th I, I think in America we're getting there, but it's, a diff it's four or five different celebratory pairings that can happen in a meal um, that really benefit each other. Um, Cabernet with shrimp cocktail, as everybody knows, is gross, okay? Yeah. So we should be having another um, choice with that. So from an engineering standpoint of how I set up, if you come into any one of my restaurants, you're gonna have choices. Yeah. And, and, when, when you, and when you look at food content, um, the most basic principle of wine pairing to food is uh, fat content 
versus tan and content. Okay. Uh, and so if, if you have a, uh, so the, the, this Pinot Noir is very, very elegant and it's got very soft, there's supple tannins. You, you, can, you can get some of it, but it's not like a, this giant monster. And so if you were just to look at like different cuts of steak, a ribeye is going to have a higher fat content. And yep. so, when, so when that cooks down, it's going to require wine with more tannins. What we're trying to go, go for in our mouth is a marriage, not people fighting um, right. for space. And so what you want to do is you want to find things that, in, in my opinion, that, that complement and enhance each other. So with, with this, I would probably pick a, a, a cut of beef. Uh, if I was having beef with Pinot, that's great with chicken. It's great. Thanksgiving's coming up. Turkey, everybody, right here. Yes. Uh, yes. And the cranberry sauce. Um, but with, with the Pinot Noir, if you were, if you were in a steakhouse, I'd probably be going with the filet, which has yep. a, a much less fat content than a New York strip or a ribeye. So just from a basic understanding, and, and, and the same thing is true with, the, with pieces of fish. So if I was having a piece of salmon, generally a lot of, uh, has a much higher fat content than swordfish. So a beautiful piece of salmon, sockeye salmon with this would be delicious. But if I, I was agree. going into a, a beautiful uh, North Atlantic um, swordfish uh, dish, I'd probably be going right to a uh, white burgundy or um, a beautiful uh, Chardonnay of yours um, for that because the fat, the fat content is much, much less. Um, also wine obviously has elements of alcohol um, alcohol is a, uh, a burning, uh, can be a burning influence if there's too much of it. Um, so one of, I think one of my first wine experiences when I was little, and I, when I teach class, I always talk about this, is what wine do they serve in, um, in uh, Chinese restaurants with all the Sichuan food? And my first wine, I think I, I well, not the first one I had, but um, when I was still very young, before I was supposed to be able to drink, was plum wine. <laughs> Is because it had that oh. that that sugar. Uh, it was it was cooler and it balanced the spicy Szechuan um, peppers that that were in those kinds of dishes. So, alcohol content. If you're if you're serving things that are um, uh, very spicy in the in the uh, uh, like if you're cooking things with peppers or or things like that, you want to find a wine that kind of soothes that burn. Um, so uh, if you're if you're having Chinese food, Riesling uh, does this for me. Um, you can get into an Auslesa style um, or just something with lower alcohol um, that might have a more sweet component to it. You also don't want a lot of oak. Oak imparts a lot of tannins as well. And if you have a lot of tannins in, in, in your wine, the tannin actually, when it reacts with uh, things that are spicy, actually makes them spicier. And so um, it's just not a good complement. So you always want to think about level of alcohol, wood treatments, tannins, and then pairing that um, with the correct uh, um, dish that you're serving. Um, one of the, one, one, one of the uh, harder things to uh, pair with, obviously, when you get into salads that are, have heavy vinegar on them, you want to stay with more of a, um, I love the, the uh, Marsan Viognier type, yep. type of uh, varietals that offer a little bit of lift, more fruit, so you're not, you don't have acid with acid. And then when you get into steak, we all know um, pairing with the different types of uh, lean versus, um, we call it marbling, not fat. Uh, and then um, when you get into the dessert category, um, you know, you just want to make sure that the wine and the food, uh, if, if you're having a sweet dessert, uh, that the wine isn't sweeter than the dessert or the dessert isn't sweeter than, than the wine. Just try to match it. But, um, you know, and, and champagne, if, if, there's, if there's one thing that champagne goes the best with, it's with savory foods. And so I always try to get guests at the beginning of the meal when you're having your hors d'oeuvre or a, 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 little, a beautiful little piece of fish or something more, more savory, savory, even potato chips, um, that's the time to enjoy beautiful bubbles. Um, uh, don't, don't eat it with your cake. <laughs> it, great really idea. Easy. Well, <laughs> I think you're really showing how much Art and science is going into food and wine pairing and how complex it is. Hence this professionalism you have. Now, Tyler, what trends have you seen in the last 30 years that are to you the most compelling in wine and in food in America? Okay. 
Big question, I know. But you're yeah, the man who could tackle that. Remember, no, the no, highest no. honor of the Guild of Sommelier, dear friends, is in front of us. So he knows yeah. it all. He received yeah. the highest awards. Yep. But um, uh, I, I think from a wine standpoint, um, even, even in the last 30 years, if you remember what was on your table as a child, yep. um, my, my, my father and my mother probably had about four or five wines that were kind of go-to that were available. Now there's 500. And wine has become, if you also look at drinking habits um, of America 30 years ago from just a gallon standpoint per um, you know, uh, consumer, it was nothing. It, it was really, it was kind of an elite thing where country clubs would serve some Bordeaux in a couple of places, but um, you, you know, it was a lot of cocktails and uh, it, was, it was beer, things like that. So wine has taken more of our, I would, for lack of a better word, stomach, and it's still continuing to rise. And there's two reasons for that. Um, one is, is America has disillusioned um, the, uh, and this is probably the some Master Sommelier Society too, in education, it's not as hard to understand right now. There's not this mystique of, it's just for rich folks. And it's more part of our, our, our daily life, just in general as, as people. So the biggest thing I've seen in, in the wine business um, is the amount of new world wines and, and great new world wines uh, especially in America, that have uh, proliferated over the last 30 years. And again, 30 years ago, when you, when you walked into a restaurant and they had 100 wines on their list, maybe three were from America. Now it's 95% of the list. And um, as an American, uh, that makes me very, very proud because Absolutely. that's exactly what you see when you walk into a, a, a restaurant in Bone. They're going to have Burgundian wines. And, yeah. And... Uh, so, so that, that that's gonna that's gonna uh, I, I think that's a great proliferation. And then, for, and then from a food standpoint, I think, um, and this also affects the wine community. I think the the way wine was made and the way food was brought to people 30 years ago um, wasn't the most healthy. Um, probably didn't have the uh, best standards. I remember growing up on fish sticks. Um, they can't be good for you. You know what I mean, and and things like that. But it's um, e even even with even with cattle now, it's the type of cattle, it's how it's raised, is yeah. you know the whole thing with organic, the whole slow uh, food movement. All these things make us as humans healthier, um, are more nourishing to the soul. And you also follow this in the wine community of making sure we're not we're 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 not adding sugars to to the wine. We're not, um, what do you call it? Uh, adding mega purple. I think that's a, a, a wine word. We're, yeah. not over, we're not over oaking things by putting wood, wood chips in it. If, if you're doing the right thing, you yes. know what I mean? And, and so I, 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 think, I think the food that we're eating right now um, at, at my level, and um, uh, I think most places, I'm not gonna say fast food or anything like that. I'm not sure that's that much healthier for you. But um, from the, the wines we're drinking now and the food that we are uh, still elevating is much more elevated. And I'm just very, very proud to be part of that generation of people yeah. that, that put this all on our back and just said, this, this is screwed up. This is fucked up. We're going to make this better. And, wow. and then just move it, move it, move it forward. Well, so, with, yeah, sorry, which you have in an amazing way. I mean, just the wine to show all our friends today is the proof that you've made things so much better in the wine because I'd love for you to explain at Morton's, Del Frisco's, and obviously Mastro's and many others of your great, phenomenal uh, you yep. know, places, destinations, how far you go into and how serious you are pairing food and wine. And dear friends, I got to tell you, I've been proposing wines to Tyler for many, many decades now. And I've always been so impressed by his palate, not just for him, but for his consumer, his guests, 
fitting exactly what people want at Morton's. And I was amazed, and Tyler, I'd love for you to explain it, how you develop with us this Primal Cut, because I think this is kind of a dream wine we crafted together, and the yeah. end result is a bomb. It's an yeah, explosion. I, 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 John Charles, what's the vintage you're holding in your hand? I'm holding uh, the 2016. 2016, so I, 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 from right behind me here, I pulled out a bottle of 2012. It's even the old label. That's yep. how long we've been doing this. Um, but uh, I, I remember this process very well. I, was, um, I wanted to come up with a, the most incredible wine uh, for Morton's. I was only managing Morton's at that time. And uh, uh, for our guests to enjoy, um, that was an exceptional value but also offered over delivered for the price. And so one of the ways in our community, um, in the restaurant business, if you're of a certain scale or even total wine and more, um, cause, cause they're at a scale if you're in the retail business is if, if you have an, if, if you have enough velocity, you can go to, well, you can't go to everybody. John Charles opened his arm to me, uh, our arms to me you on this project, but, but you uh, and your lovely wife, of course. Yeah, exactly. But um, you you find somebody that you find a, a winemaker or a wine house that you love, and you knock on their door and they and go, uh, can we make a wine together that's just just for my guests? Uh, I really really have this flavor profile in mind that goes um, the best with our food. Uh, we really want something that offers pride and ownership to our staff um, to be able to sell, and we want something that nobody else has uh, because we we're creating it organically and um and so i i came to uh, john charles and he was kind enough to listen to the idea i think my wife was with me the first time um but then was uh, i also met and my him. listening was a lot more focused yeah <laughs> thanks to her but uh yeah and, no, then, uh, great. and then we... <laughs> you know tyler i don't i don't say that as a joke for you as a family together yeah. Feminine palette, masculine palette. Yeah. You had the vision, and you had the idea, and ultimately you created the wine with us. We just helped you to yeah. execute what you had in mind. Right. Well, you you help a lot because Stephanie's able to, or Stephanie Putnam, your winemaker, is able to source grapes that other folks can't get, and um, there's uh, your cellars are pristine. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. So. Um, Again, I was able to sit down, and if you've never visited Raymond, whoever's watching this, um, they, they have a, a tasting room where you can do blinds and blends and things like this. But uh, I think the first time we sat down, we, we probably tasted, I don't know, 20 or 25 uh, different lots and put them together and came up with this, this name. And at that time, um, I wanted something that screamed steak. And so Primal Cut was available. Uh, we were able to... Um, uh, own that uh, name and the primal cut is the is if you're not familiar with it it's the it's the piece in the cow that's the whole fillet so if you uh, um, uh, buy a whole fillet in the grocery store or something like that that's called the primal cut that goes down kind of the back of the uh, cattle right there so it was the, it was the perfect um, steak wine and that's why it was we chose also Cabernet and so what it's morphed into now is it's our number one selling premium bottle of wine at Morton's and has been um, since its inception. Uh, it's, it's, and I commend you for that, Tyler. And, and I think all our viewers will really understand what goes into the selection of food and wine pairing because it's really a big deal. And uh, you take it not only seriously, but you go to the source. And I think what I admire- and you I go to the source, And you go to the source in our business every year. It's not like one and done. That's because it. We, we obviously uh, are creating something a little different. Well, every time you cook, it's a little different. And then every time you make a wine, it, you know. So, but anyway, yeah. So it's amazing. So, Tyler, what inspires you at the highest level? Because you, 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 well, you were nice enough to, you were nice enough to uh, uh, say hello to my wife, and that's my number one inspiration. Ooh, obviously, nice. she um, uh, and she's close by. So I hope we get to see her today. I'm not, I'm not sure if, 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 that, if, if that's going to well, happen. I sent her a kiss. <laughs> right. But, it, but, it, but I, I think we talked about it early, earlier. Um, I, think, I, I think when you're younger, um, your passion to succeed and to 
kind of move things forward and make your mark is kind of a driving force in life. But, um, and to me that comes with taking care of people, but you know, as, as you get older, I still, it kind of changes into, I, I love the works I do with charity. I like the boards that I sit on uh, for charity. I like to help others. I like to help my church. Um, I like to, I, I like to give back to the community. I think, you know, um, as when, when you're younger, you do a lot of taking and spend a lot of energy. And I, and I think we all have it, uh, a responsibility later in our lives to give it all back 300% and leave this place, leave this world a better place than, than, than we came into it, hopefully. And hopefully that, that, that rubs off on, uh, others that you touch. Um, and that's what we're doing with wine. That's what we're doing with dining. Um, and that's what I try to do every day is inspire other people, um, to be better, but also, um, help them if there's any way that I can. Uh, I think probably the last job I'll ever have, and maybe after this one, I get to do a lot of education now, but, um, de definitely teaching, uh, it's inspiring to teach the new young people that are coming in um, yes. to be the next, the next great person. And I hold a tremendous amount of uh, responsibility in that process. And I, I take it very, very seriously um, trying to mentor um, anybody that is, is, is open to it and uh, would like that help. Uh, nothing makes me happier than do that. Than and you're happy. an amazing mentor. And tell us what the Guild of Sommelier has done as well for you. You received the highest awards. You're very right. active with them. Yeah, well, they, they, with the award I got from them, when the, the Guild of Sommeliers um, obviously accredits the, uh, um, the, uh, the, the, to become a master sommelier. But um, the, the award that I got was what's called the Distinguished Service Award. So it's called a blue pin. And it's not for my knowledge in um, the different geology of schists in the Vaca Valley in Aust Austria, as much as it is for my work in the wine business. That's right. Reg regarding wine education, regarding uh, running large programs, regarding um, being an educator and things like that. And uh, at the time where I got it, uh, Mr. Fred Dame uh, was the president of the Court of Master Sommeliers and gave me my blue pin, uh, which is another highlight of my life. I cried then too, but uh, I, I, I didn't expect it. But um, I think I was the eighth person uh, that they ever gave, gave one out to. So I'm very proud to wear it. I didn't wear it today. I thought that would be showing off. Uh, no, know. no, but I had to say it. So everybody <laughs> needs to know. Right. Very rare right. award to, to be right. granted. And, right. you know, I really want people to, to really feel not only your passion, but how inspirational you are for others and how seriously you take food and wine pairing. Because I think a lot of people think, oh, there was such a deal on such a wine and that's why they had that by the glass. But it's not how it works. And no. you calculate everything in thorough details, whether it's a seafood house or steakhouse or Correct. any of the themes, right? Yep. No, there, there's there at, at my level too, and, and John Charles, this is true because your your business, while me, while it may seem small, it's it's very large as well. You, not nothing you see when you walk into my to one of my restaurants is an accident. Nothing. We don't have the space for an accident, and so it's it's very. Um, if 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 there's a certain wine there, there's there's a very very good reason that there, it's going to be there. It's going to cost this much for a very very particular reason. Um, and it's going to, you know, and that, that's always changing. Yes. But, but there, there is, there is no, um, there's no chance, you know, in, in what I do. I think that's, that's what I love. Yeah. Uh, you have another passion, obviously, Tyler, who, which is history. So we selected a wine as our last wine to taste. Oh yeah. Incredible Chateau Buena Vista Cabernet. And yeah. I'd love for you, in your own words, to describe this wine. It has been one of our very, very successful wine from the oldest winery in California. It, yeah, in California. Oh, favorite as well. So tell us about it, because, and how would you pair this wine with? Because I want to see how people, I want them to see how you think and how you analyze things. Okay, well, yeah, and the first thing you do is obviously look at the color. And I do just do something very simple. I put my finger behind uh, the wine. Okay. Look through it, and, and if I can, if, if I can see like my, all of my finger, um, it's probably didn't spend enough time on the lees. 
um, or it might be, I see, I know this is Cabernet, so that's all it's telling me right now, but I can tell this is a rich, I, I can already tell this is a rich brooding uh, Cabernet I'm about to get into that's gonna have a lot of depth and character to it. Just by looking, looking at it um, through the glass. Then when I go to the nose, and I like to put my mouth over too. So you're breathing through your nostrils and your mouth. Yep. I'm following your direction. I'm tasting finally. Like there you go. Now, you're, now you're tasting. You definitely want both because your nose has different receptors than your palate. And I'm already salivating just by uh, smelling through the mouth. And then I'm going to taste it. By the way, dark uh, plums, um, blackberries, um, so a little bit of cedar, tobacco leaf. I mean, all the classic aromatics. This is big and this is beautiful. It's a 2017 that I have here, John Charles. Yeah. And I should have decanted this. It's that, it's that big and, it, and it's also of such a high quality. It deserved it, but I, I for whatever reason. Well, the night is young. Good. You're going yeah. to be able to enjoy it with your <laughs> lovely wife later. And how would you pair this wine? Wow. It's it's a bomb in the mouth, right? Voila! Yeah, no, th this is a ribeye all day long. A New York strip, um, lamb lamb chops would would work with this. This is a uh, this is a beast. It's awesome. I mean, a, a beautiful fruit, beautiful tannins. I'm still tasting and tasting and tasting. It doesn't finish. It keeps on giving, John Charles. This is beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Well, to your generosity, ours to you. So, Tyler, you've done, in the world of wine, food, community service, charity, so much, as you said, for your church, your local groups. What is Tyler Field's dream oh. that you've maybe never shared with me, that you're willing to share because you're very dynamic, you're extremely entrepreneurial, you had the head of one of the most successful restaurant groups in the United States and in the world. What's next? What's, um, what are your aspirations? I think it's a little bit about, I mean, just, ju just from a personal level, um, for the rest yeah. of my life, I, I hope that I can bring, spread as much good as I can to this, to this world uh, as possible. So when you're, it's, it's that classic thing we all think about as human beings, when you're taking that last breath or you're a couple of days away and you know you're about to pass, you can finally relax and go, you know what? I did okay. Because it's all about um, if you if you love enough and you, and, and you love the, your family and you love um, the people you inspire and you, you've given everything, I think you can go rest and then go, uh, uh, drink these beautiful wines with the angels in heaven. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm hoping to do that uh, as, That's as, one of my, as, you know, as, as one of my uh, journeys. But I, but I really think like anything else, John Charles, we owe it to the next generation coming up to be their yeah. mentors um, and to give them a place that um, leave, leave it a better place than we found it and hopefully inspire that in the same you, you know, um, with with the next generation. I expect them to be much more talented than I am. I expect the wines to be better maybe than we're making today. Maybe the wines will be better in 20 years as long as we take care of the planet. And I always kind of talk about it too. I know I'm in the business world, but uh, for those that are in business or whatever, it's, it's I, I urge you all to create something beautiful versus trying to create something profitable. If you create something beautiful, you'll triple your profits. You don't have to worry about it. And I think we get lost sometimes when we're younger. I know I did where, well, I, I got to meet my margin. I got to do this. And you, and you lose yeah. track of, no, if I make the most beautiful wine or I do the most beautiful pairing, it's, it's all going to work out. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like Apple computer versus another type of an IBM computer. Well, eventually it's because it was so beautiful and tactile or whatever. It's now what the largest company in the world but it came from it came from a more artistic angle. And I know, John Charles, uh, you collect art and have um, some of the most beautiful art in the world around. And I, I think if you look at life more through an artistic eye, um, you'll be much more financially successful than trying it any other way. But even if you aren't financially successful, your soul is going to be in a much better place 
um, at all time and you'll have a lot more clarity in your life. That's just my opinion. Wow. Woo! I'm having goosebumps of excitement. I love your dreams and you kind of touch on it because my last question, which I think you could phrase a little differently too when you, you've touched on that inspiration and overall message to people on beauty and creativity. Last comment you wanna to leave to everyone tonight as far as your overall message of hope and overall motivational message for the future because you're a very positive person what advice, what message would you have to everyone besides beauty and besides creativity? I think it's, uh, you have to, it, we even started this out, you, you, you have to, you have to have, you have to know what your passion is. I, I have this phrase where, you know, God helped the man who doesn't know what he's sure of. We just kind of bumble around or, 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 yeah. or whatever. You, you pick a, you pick your passion and then you spend your life trying to do it better. Not, not as a competition to anybody else, but trying, trying to turn water into wine, trying to turn a rock into a diamond, trying to, what is that? How hard are you going to go at this so you can create something out of, out of nothing? So I, I think it's, uh, I think it's passion and and self-belief and and not letting anything anything hold you back um we're going through as you know and why we're on a zoom right now we're going through this unprecedented uh, uh time um this world right now and you know i was talking to another colleague of mine i'm working harder uh, than I ever think I have, but it's kind of because I'm in the moment. I'm sure I've always been working this hard, but it just made us stop and think differently. And, you, you know, you still have to follow your passion. How are you going to get it done now? So it's, 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 been, it's been interesting. This whole experience in the last six months has made me uh, uh, um, a much stronger person, uh, for, for lack of a better word, uh, if you put two and two together. So, you know, it's just adversity and it's not going to stop me and it shouldn't stop you. And um, so John Charles, it would be following your passion, perseverance, never get up, never give up and, and create beauty. And I love that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> well, that's no, no, I, have some, I have some great wines, but I'm good. Hey, you're giving me so much excitement. You know what I want to do is I want to run in the vineyards and, and keep creating because you're such a great inspiration, and I really want to thank you, Tyler. I know you're very busy. You're revamping so many wine programs and food programs, and uh, you're the most influential in America, and we're so grateful to have you had with us tonight, and I'm so glad that you were so philosophical as well and spiritual in your approach. Not only you gave us great advice, great enlightenment, and of course, great inspiration. So. Thank you so much, Tyler, for being our friend. Of course. Thank you so much for what you've done for the last 30 years and the next 30 to the wine and food world. And very importantly for your community as well, because no one more than you helps the community around your restro and the people around. And you're an amazing person. And I feel very fortunate to know you and, and for all of us to be able to create together. Oh, you're you're awesome, Mon ami. To Tyler, to Happy birthday! Uh, wait, I, I, as we leave, John, here. I'll put on the king's hat one more time. I love it. Say au revoir <laughs> to the king. <laughs> God save the king. <laughs> chin chin. Bye bye, everybody. Love you. Us.